In this video, we are going to see about the basics of registers and the control signals available because uh, a little bit of uh, this thing, uh, uh, knowledge about the registers and control signals are needed for further understanding of this uh, unit. So first we will see the basic registers. Before that, we will see uh, which language the computer will understand. The computer will understand only the binary numbers, that is zeros and ones. But we cannot write programs on zeros and ones because it is difficult for the human beings to write only in zeros and ones. So the computer can understand only binary, which we otherwise call as machine language. So the programmer has to communicate only in terms of zeros and ones, but it is very difficult to do. So the computer manufacturers, they have devised English-like words to represent the binary instructions of a machine. So if you take any microprocessor, say for example, each manufacturer, Intel is a uh, microprocessor manufactured by the Intel Corporation. Then Motorola is another microprocessor. It is manufactured by the Motorola company. Zilog is another uh, microprocessor, which is again by the respective company. Now, when they develop the microprocessor, they have their own set of registers and they have their own set of control signals, okay, which has been inbuilt in the microprocessor. In order to use all those things and do a particular job, whatever job you are giving, whatever the job the computer can do. So, what the manufacturers do is how to move data between one register and another register, how to move the data between the primary memory to the internal parts of the uh, microprocessor and how the arithmetic logic unit works or uh, it manipulates all these data and how the control signals are used in order to do all the carry over all these operations. For all these things, they have devised instruction set okay so for example when the data has to be moved from a register to b register means move b comma a that is move the value in b into a so like that they have devised set of instructions okay so this uh, each company when they generate when they manufacture the microprocessor they have their own instruction set that we call it as instruction set yeah instruction which will work in an Intel microprocessor will not work in a motor low. It will not work in a Zilog because their registers are different. Their control units name, everything will be different. And so when a user works in a Zilog microprocessor, the system which is made up of the Zilog microprocessor, he must learn those instruction sets. Uh, uh, of that particular microprocessor. So in same way, it goes for others also. So what happened? The manufacturers give, instead of uh, doing, uh, making the programmers to write codings in terms of zeros and ones, which is again, it's not possible. They write, they give instruction set, which in turn, when you execute, when the programmer write in terms of these instruction set, this autumn, this will be getting converted into the machine level language. It's nothing but zeros on which will be understood by the underlying microprocessor. This is how it works. But still, this uh, instruction sets are um, very much, uh, they will work only in the respective microprocessor. So this is again a uh, bottleneck. So what they do is, the next thing is, they develop the higher level languages. Higher level languages, nothing but our C, C++, Python, etc. So you write English-like statements. For example, for loop, while loop, like that, you write English-like statements, which in turn will be converted into the respective machine language. The compiler takes care of that. Anyway, any high level language, you type the information instructions in a compiler, which in turn will be converted. The compiler will take care of, they, it will convert them into the object code, which is nothing but the respective machine code. Okay, so this is the process. So these instructions, whereas the, the instructions set which are mainly for a 
particular microprocessor or called assembly otherwise called assembly language also okay so these instructions are also called as assembly language programs uh, which uses this instruction set the assembly language are specific to one machine that's what i have said now which cannot be executed or not transferable to other machine which means it cannot be once you write a program say for example you are going to write a program for finding the factorial of a number in an intel processor that cannot be executed in a zilog uh, that is if you use the assembly language because those are specific for a particular machine only so to overcome this only we go for a general purpose language or high level language like c++ python okay so these can be executed in any machine a python can work in a uh, processor which has zilog which is a zilog processor it get the same program can work in a uh, windows platform it can work in a unix linux platform Okay, so that's what. So microprocessor 8085 has 8 bit data. Uh, so now what we are going to see is the basic, there is a basic microprocessor by Intel Corporation, which is called, which is given the number 8085. In that we call it as Intel 8085. And it has an 8 bit, it will store an 8 bit data. In main memory, it can store 8 bit data. In a line, it can store 8 bit data. So uh, if you say 2 power 8, 256 combinations uh, can be there, you can store. So that much address can be there. So for example, if you, if you take, say this is, an, uh, this is an instruction. It is an instruction that increments the number in accumulated by one. That is the meaning of this. Now, another instruction is this, because you have to write it in terms of eight bits, right? Because it accepts only eight bit data. So it is an instruction that add the number in register B to the accumulator. This is the meaning. See, we cannot write instructions in this way. So now you can, uh, if you consider this, as we have seen, this is equivalent for incrementing accumulator by one. And this is uh, add the number in register B to the accumulator. But by seeing this, how we can remember, we cannot do this. So that's why we go for mnemonics and we call it as an assembly level language. So here we can write, this is, an, this is the actually the assembly language. So how we can write, see this is equivalent of three and this is equivalent of C. So you can write it as three C. And then this is eight and this is zero, so A zero. So in hexa, you can write it and you have to feed in hexa. Okay, but this is also somewhat difficult for us to remember 3c 80 and so on numerical values so there comes the actual mnemonic coding which we otherwise called as assembly language program uh, where we use uh, english like statements okay so we'll be seeing that in the next video